hello everyone so in this video i am going to tell you about the kawasaki disease so as i took the name kawasaki disease what is going to come in your mind please uh, because in my mind always when boy image is there who has red red eyes red mucosa strawberry tongue like inflammation red red redness is there everywhere redness is there so in kawasaki disease redness is there that's is that one is coming in my that image is come uh, that image always used to come to my mind so now in the kawasaki disease so first of all we have to know that what is kawasaki disease so it is a autoimmune disease so it is a autoimmune disease now after the autoimmune disease uh, we also have to know that uh, which kind of blood vessels it will involve large size medium size or small size vessels so for the kawasaki disease it involves the medium blood vessels medium sized blood vessels so medium vessels involvement is there involvement will be there now for the kawasaki disease uh, like i told you that when image is come to my mind that is always redness red eyes red mucosa red strawberry tongue so so for the red means there is involvement of the mucosa so the other name for kawasaki disease is what is the other name that is the muco because it involves the mucus so mucocutaneous means it also involves the skin so mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome lymph node syndrome so this one is the other name for kawasaki disease because it involves the mucus so that's why mucus uh, of the eyes of the mouth so mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome it is and it involves the medium vessels now uh, in how many percent like uh, we see the child with kawasaki disease so in 80 percent we see the kawasaki disease in less than four years in 80 percent patient of the kawasaki disease we see less than four year child but this disease is not seen in adults please remember that it is not seen in adults now what is the diagnostic criteria how we identify that it is a kawasaki disease so for the diagnostic criteria for the diagnostic criteria we have to remember that first of all what were the essential criteria so in the diagnostic criteria we have essential criteria and in the essential criteria we have the patient the person the child the child have fever for at least five days for at least five days the person the child has fever and he is more irritable like irritability will be like he is much more irritable child so irritability will be there irritability is present in the child and it is like much more out of proportion for the fever these were the essential criteria now uh, what were the additional criteria in which like any four out of five must be present so in additional criteria additional criteria like four out of five must be present so in the additional criteria we have trick that is the r e e m a this is the mnemonic to remember the additional criteria for the kawasaki disease now in the rima we have r r stand for rash like the child has rash and it is like the rash were polymorphous polymorphous non vesicular rash please remember the rashes were non vesicular and polymorphous various shape of rash will be there e for edema in the child there is edema is there like edema is present on hands on feet but edema is present now the next e the next e stands for the like eyes in eyes what will happen i told you that there is redness of eyes like conjunctivitis is there conjunctivitis vitis we see conjunctivitis so e for i that is conjunctivitis and this conjunctivitis is non purulent please remember that it is non purulent so this one is the important that it is non purulent and non vesicular vesicular rashes will be there now the m 
so the m involvement is like for the mucus mucosal involvement mucosal involvement so in the mucosal involvement like uh, where is the mucus is present like strawberry tongue cracked lips so strawberry tongues strawberry tongue cracked lips so this is the mucosal involvement now the last one that is a and a stands for adenopathy like cervical adenopathy or unilateral adenopathy will be there but it is non superative and non tender please remember that it is non superative and non tender adenopathy will be there so out of these five only four character if it is present four characters were found then it is a kawasaki disease these were the additional criteria in spite of it fever must be present for at least five days please remember that one also now these were the additional criteria after the additional criteria we have to find the marker like how we can identify which marker must be present in for the um, uh, kawasaki disease so inflammatory marker so inflammatory marker for kawasaki is thrombopoietin please remember thrombopoietin it is the inflammatory marker for the kawasaki disease but in kawasaki disease please remember we will find thrombocytosis we will find thrombocytosis please remember not the thrombocytopenia so thrombocytosis is finding please remember thrombocytosis will be there thrombopoietin is the inflammatory marker and when we will see it we will see in the second or third week of the illness we found this in the second or third week of illness now what were the complication going to lead to kawasaki disease so if we will not going to treat kawasaki then what complication it may lead so complication is it leads to coronary artery aneurysm coronary artery aneurysm coronary at uh, uh, coronary artery aneurysm we will find and in 25% cases there is ami acute myocardial infarction will occur that is acute myocardial infarction will be there so if i am i will ask you one question that what is the disease in which mi is occur in the child at the age of a children like mi mostly we are seeing that mi occur in adult person or elderly people but i am asking you like which in which condition we will see that mi is occurring in the child so in a uh, child in a childhood age we will find the mi so please remember this is that condition we are studying that is kawasaki disease in which we find in the children acute myocardial infarction now what is the clinical diagnosis for the kawasaki disease so for the clinical diagnosis so for the clinical diagnosis uh there is like no diagnostic test for this kawasaki disease please remember no diagnostic test for kawasaki disease now my next question then how we can treat this patient like if a person if we identify yes this this child has a kawasaki disease now how we will treat him or her so we will treat by giving intravenous by giving intravenous immunoglobulin like uh, if if the child already had the kawasaki disease we will not give this uh, intravenous immunoglobulin we will give after 11 month after the treatment of kawasaki disease after the treatment of this child we will give after 11 month so after 11 month we will give intravenous immunoglobulin now we will only treat the symptoms that is by giving steroids to uh, inhibit the inflammation because inflammation is there and also we give the aspirin now in if the child is in the acute stage like i am telling you if the child is in acute stage like if he 
comes within one to two weeks then how we you will treat so in the acute state we will give like uh, intravenous immunoglobulin 2 gram per kg like over uh, 12 to 10 to 12 hours sorry 10 to 12 hours and we will give the aspirin high dose please remember here we are giving aspirin aspirin high dose and high dose aspirin means we are giving like 80 to 100 microgram milligram per kg per day to the child this is the like we are giving aspirin but is in the high dose so please remember high dose aspirin is given within one to two weeks of the kawasaki disease now if it if it is in the convalescent stage convalescent stage like if it comes after six to eight weeks so after six to eight weeks you, uh, how we will give we will give normal aspirin that is about three to five milligram per kg per day and we will give like once daily until the six to eight weeks if we will if all the findings of coronary will normal because it the complication of kawasaki is acute coronary aneurysm common coronary artery aneurysm so uh, if there is no coronary findings will be there then we will give this aspirin like three to five milligram per kg per day but if the person is in the long therapy if the child is in long-term therapy with coronary uh, abnormalities so long-term therapy with coronary abnormalities so how we will give how we will treat him so we will give aspirin in the same range that is three to five milligram per kg per day but with that we will add clopidogrel because uh, coronary findings will be there that's why we are adding clopidogrel and the dose is one milligram per kg per day maximum we can give 75 milligram per day this, this one is the maximum dose but here we are giving clopidogrel one milligram per kg per day and also for the risk of thrombosis we will add warfarin we are going to add warfarin for high risk thrombosis for high risk thrombosis so that's all about the kawasaki disease let's revise it in the uh, 2x speed that is kawasaki it, it another name mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome it is autoimmune disease medium vessels were involving essential criteria fever at least five days uh, in the additional criteria we have rima r for rash edema conjunctivitis musk mucosal involvement is there adenopathy will be there and inflammatory marker is thrombopoietin please remember it here that in kawasaki disease we will find thrombocytosis not the thrombocytopenia thrombocytosis thrombocytosis for kawasaki disease please remember thrombocytosis thrombocytosis and it is the only condition where in the childhood we find acute mi please remember acute mi normally finding in the adult or elderly person but here the acute mi is finding in the child so this is the condition where acute mi is a uh, acute mi can occur it is a complication of kawasaki disease now for the treatment we will give steroid aspirin intravenous immunoglobulin for the acute stage we are only giving aspirin that is of high dose please remember in acute stage we are giving high dose normally we are giving aspirin if coronary findings will be there we add clopidogrel or warfarin that's all for this video thank you bye bye guys